Good morning, everyone. For a few minutes this morning, let's talk and think about honoring God the Father. You know, that's certainly what Jesus did. Uh, one of the things emphasized repeatedly um, with Jesus' time on this earth is that he came to do the will of his Father. Um, and he always did those things that were pleasing to God, um, his Father, even on occasions whenever his life was threatened for claiming to be God's Son. In Romans 13, we read that we're to give honor to whom honor is due. And while this is referencing honor among men, I would suggest uh, that there's no other person, no other one, on whom more honor is deserving than the Almighty God, our Creator. So let's think. How did Jesus honor God? Uh, I, I put down three just simple examples here, stories I think we all probably know uh, very well. How did Jesus honor his Father? You remember when Jesus was uh, 12 years old? Um, uh, the family, Mary and Joseph, Jesus had come down from Nazareth to Jerusalem uh, for the feast of the Passover. And after it was done, remember uh, Joseph and Mary are traveling back, um, uh, back home, uh, supposing that the boy Jesus was with them. And after a day of traveling, they realize that he isn't with them. Um, so what do they do? They, they, go back to, they go back to Jerusalem. On the third day, um, do you remember where they find Jesus? Do you remember what he said? In Luke chapter 2, verse 46, it says, And after three days they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And Jesus said to them, Why are you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? That's the ESV version. The, the King James version says, Did you not know I must be about my father's business? A uh, very familiar passage. So even at this point... Jesus, his actions took showing a high, high esteem, um, high value, showing honor to his father, what he placed on his heavenly father, and the purpose, quite frankly, of, of why he was sent here. Do you remember Matthew chapter 3? Jesus comes down from Galilee uh, to meet John at the Jordan and um, uh, to get baptized by John. If you, if you recall, John's a little... Uh, taken back by this, thinks this isn't the way this is supposed to work. In fact, John even says, you need to baptize me, not the other, uh, not the other uh, way around. Did Jesus need to be baptized? He, he was without sin, after all. Um, but Jesus tells John in verse 15 of Matthew chapter 3, he said, let it be so, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And of course, John baptizes Jesus. And then I think it's significant that it's at this point, the voice from heaven says what? It says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. No doubt, Jesus brought honor to God when he healed the lame, when he fed the 5,000 and all these other countless times. However, this pleasing statement doesn't show up there. It shows up here in Matthew chapter 3 when Jesus was baptized. Jesus being baptized was pleasing to God. And I would suggest to you that the act itself brought honor to God the Father. The third, third big story here. How far was Jesus willing to go to accomplish the will of his Father? You remember, on the way to Jerusalem, before the triumphal entry, Jesus tells his disciples on several occasions what's going to happen in Jerusalem. And he's quite specific in that. In one of those contexts, in Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, Jesus says that the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. And then later on in chapter 26 of Matthew's gospel, uh, Jesus in the garden, right? And we remember what he says. He says, my father, if at all possible, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, 
but yours be done. Jesus was willing to go to the end. He went to his death in order to do the will of his Father. He honored God through his life of work and his acts of obedience. Um, so, so again, here's three simple examples. There's so many examples, so many examples of where Jesus brought honor to God. Uh, and I'm sure you probably all see the connection point I'm, I'm trying to make for us this morning. How do we honor God? S- certainly we are not Jesus, not Jesus, but how do we honor God? The best answer I can think of is we honor God by remembering, obeying, and following the Son, by following Jesus. We honor God with our hearts, with our minds, with our bodies, by connecting ourselves to the Son. You know, that's the only way to the Father. Jesus himself said that to be true in John chapter 14. Remember, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, that no one comes to the Father except through me. You know, in Genesis, we read that God created man in his image. Yes, he made mankind in a physical sense like other creatures of his creation, uh, but man was made differently. And because we're made in the image of God, there is a characteristic of, um, uh, of divine, of eternal, that makes us different than the other Uh, other parts of God's creation. Sadly, sin broke that perfect fellowship we had with God. But God took it upon himself to restore this relationship. And it was restored only through the Son. So at this time, we remember Jesus in this memorial, which we do every first day of the week. This body was broken, this blood was spilt, in order to restore our fellowship with God. And by doing this, by by observing this memorial, we honor our God, the Father, the Almighty Creator. 